doing, CK? Dude, I'm I'm <laughs> del I'm a delight. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you, mate. So let's introduce you. Who are you? I'm CK. As eloquently introduced just then, I'm a creator, writer, filmmaker. Mm -hmm. I reckon is the best and most succinct way to describe me, Dean. First thing you want to do, I don't want to make it too awkward, but I want to give you a hug. That's all right. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> just I'll, 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 I I'll, just got comfortable <laughs> in that change. You've now it's messed right. it up. Dude, always. The, the, I'm always reason, I'm always in for a hug. I think the reason why I wanted to do that is yeah, it's awkward, but also there's a documentary that you did called 61 Hugs. Yes. How the heck did you come like come round to kind of doing 61 Hugs? Well, the how is, I'm, I'm actually surprised. I get asked that a lot and it's often people have watched it and it's explained in the film. I don't know mm. if people think the explanation is made up, but that is literally what happened. You know, yeah. the way the reveal at the end in yeah, terms yeah. of how, yeah. that's literally what happened. Oh, okay. Um, so, you know, I don't necessarily want to spoil it for the humans, but <laughs> the idea came to me in exactly the same way I say it came to me in the, in the short film. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. I was eating late at night and then it was a eureka moment due to that thing that, presented itself so that's yeah. how in terms yeah. of the why the why is is the why is probably twofold the why as a creator and a writer mm -hmm. i'm just fascinated by content that is unscripted and is on is spontaneous like everything i do as you know yeah. is unscripted there's no script it's just me it's an idea it's the universe that's what you do and within those pyramids i'm fascinated within that pyramid of idea me and universe i'm fascinated to see if something remarkable can happen so when the idea for 61 hooks came to me I knew the idea was strong because mm -hmm. it was underpinned by vulnerability and jeopardy. And yes. I say all the time, like anytime I have an idea, the only way I'll go forward with it is if it has two elements, mm -hmm. vulnerability and jeopardy. And the reason I have that is I know from a viewer's point of view, that's incredibly compelling. Mm -hmm. Like I'm fascinated by what makes content watchable mm -hmm. and vulnerability and jeopardy are two things. And like 61 Hugs root was just filled with it. Yeah. So I thought, right, I'm going to do it. And, you know, I almost taught myself out of it because I was super nervous, probably the most nervous I've been before anything, yeah. apart from 100 musicians, maybe. But, you know, something made me feel in my gut and my heart that something special was waiting for me beyond that fear. Mm -hmm. So that that's the goes, why. Yeah. And kind of goes on to my next question is, how, how did you feel kind of going up to these people and going, give me a hug, <laughs> please? <laughs> I reckon, Dean, after... after the third person I asked, I was like, just my my anxiety and my fear just completely disappeared after the first three people. And, I, and that's very fortunate because if the first person or even the second person or the third person, if they're all gone, you're weird, leave me alone. I'd have yeah, like, yeah. just curled up into a ball and I, it's, I can't, I'll never know this, but I, would I have gone forward if the first three people had been like, no, would that, actually, would that have crushed my spirit? And I'd have just, I don't know. I'll never know that. Mm -hmm. But fortunately all three people were really up for it. And by that point, I was like, wow, they've set a precedent. I'm ready now to find everybody else because I was grateful for it. And then to answer that question in two parts, there were four people in that that declined. Yeah. But I was delighted for that because again, when I'm looking at things from a viewer's point of view, mm -hmm. If that would have just been 61 yeses, that would have been nice, but it would have been, uh, like you'd have been wondering, why did he get 61 yeses? Is this made up? Yeah. It's just, are they all like plants? Yeah. So there has to be to contrast. It has to be light and shade to everything. So I'm glad that there were the no's because that just made the yeses even, um, that amplified the yeses. And it made me yeah. think, oh, look at all these people saying, yes, you're a scumbag. So whatever, it doesn't matter. But yeah. I'm glad the no's were there. And it didn't knock my confidence because I think the first no, I'm trying to remember who the first no was. The first no was a group of guys just before the kids on the bike, I think. Yeah. And by that time, I'd probably got about, I think I'd had about 20-ish yeses. So mm -hmm. one no was like a drop in the ocean. Plus yeah. his two mates are up for it. So yeah. to answer your question, no, didn't did knock my confidence at all. That's purely a cumulative thing. I mean, I still have my, I still have my anxieties and, and insecurities and nerves like everybody else. But if those anxieties, nerves, and the other thing I said, which I've forgotten, if all those three <laughs> things are wrapped in a idea or a piece of content, a short film, a documentary, if they're all within that, mm -hmm. I'm happy to do it because I know that the feeling I have mm -hmm. will be mirrored in the viewers. And like I said, everything I do is always from a viewer's experience. So if I'm feeling nervous and I know that you will, and yep. I know that will draw you in. So for me, that's motivation enough to put my fear aside and go and do it. Cause I'm all about creating content that people will enjoy. That's cool. You've done something which was basically, you found a hundred artists you went to London, is that right? I went to London, then found 100 of artists in six months. <laughs> How did you find them? I mean, it was going out to open mic nights. It was using 
social media. So tweeting people I didn't know, tweeting people on Instagram, um, contacting people on Instagram, sending direct messages, doing interviews on entertainment platforms, saying I'm a guy called Seek Guys, he's doing this crazy thing. I need <laughs> I need artists that want to be photographed. Yeah. What was their feeling kind of with getting that message? Were, were they quite open to saying, yeah, look, come and, you know, come and take some photos, yeah, come yeah, and take yeah. some content? Were they all okay about it? Yeah, yeah. I think I think, I, I, I think people were just intrigued by the spectacle and stupidity of what I was doing. <laughs> In equal measure, they were just fascinated by it. Yeah. And so, and something I heard as well is that people just wanted to be part of it. Whether they needed a photograph, even if they had a shoot the day before, they were like, I want to be part of this because it's great. So, yes, come and, come and photograph me. Here's 10 pence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think I've got 10 pence. I did a few shoots for nothing because that was the nature of it. I don't know if you want to tell them what it was about or you want me to do or you're going to put that in the bits underneath the yeah, video. Yeah, okay, I, can, but... I can tell them about it, yeah. Go on then. So, so basically, you was kind of finding 100 art artists and basically said if you want to you didn't even say do you want to give me some money really did you you just yeah the whole kind of idea of 100 musicians i left my home in sheffield with 100 pounds a bag of clothes a oh, camera yeah. that's it mm -hmm. and my challenge is to find 100 independent singer-songwriters and or bands that needed a professional photo shoot for their marketing mm -hmm. whether it's posters cd covers whatever mm -hmm. and they'd commissioned me to do the photo shoot the hook was they paid me whatever they wanted there was no minimum or maximum price mm -hmm. and i had to get from zero artists to 100 yeah. before my seed money ran out and i was living off their voluntary contributions for the shoot and so it ranged from like 10 quid to 20 quid to a burger and chips because I was hungry or yeah, to 100. Yeah. I mean, the most I got was 120 quid from Clara. I was just about to ask that. <laughs> My favourite human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 120. I think, I'm, I believe Clara gave me 120 quid a day. It was probably about five days before Christmas. My clothes were in shreds. And it was, um, it, 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 it sounds, I mean, 120 quid doesn't sound much in any city. So it sounds even more minuscule in London. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, what it, it yeah, was like. Yeah, things are expensive like, in London. 120 <laughs> quid, she might as well have just given me five grand because like, it, it was a major deal to me. Then call it documentary. Not really a documentary, is it? Is it? Documentary series. I mean, ongoing project. God knows. You can't name it off of my things, <laughs> mate, to be honest with you. But it really inspired me as, as a photographer. Um, to kind of get out there and just go and see what I can do because the, the quality of the, the photography that you were doing for these guys was just surreal, really surreal. <laughs> and, and knowing the, the equipment that you was using, the lenses and things like that. You said lenses as if I had to, that you used plural as if I had two. <laughs> I, I very much did not. Just had one. Just one, just one, <laughs> just one fifty. My, my beloved nifty fifties all I shot within six months. And the most people I that think. I talk to is that it's not all about the equipment. It's about the person behind the camera. Yeah. I mean, I don't, you know, I, we could sit here. Well, actually, we couldn't because I'd get very bored. But, like, <laughs> I, you know, I could sit here all day and just talk about that one observation you just made. I mean, I've never been like, when I, I don't do photography much nowadays, as you know. But when I did, I was never the tech guy. Like, in fact, it bored me then and it bored me now. <laughs> the technicalities of photography has never done it for me. I was always about the humans. And that, that, that's just very convenient because I'm a people's person. Yeah. So the reason, and I thank you for what you just said about the photographs, mate. Mm -hmm. And I, I was thinking about this recently, actually. It might have been because I knew we were going to talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was thinking, like, um, the only reason my photographs look like they do and people look comfortable, people look natural, is just because it doesn't feel like a photo shoot. And I do everything I can to make sure that's the case. It's just two people hanging out. All the photos are secondary. Which is the best way to do it. <laughs> yeah, it always make, works for me. Make it as natural as possible and don't make it always works for kind me. of too forced yeah. as such. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can tell. I, okay. I've always been able to tell. And not many people are going to like this. I can. Okay. You can show me 10 photographs and I will tell you which of those 10 photographers is a knobhead. You're probably not going to use that word, but <laughs> I can tell you which of those 10 photographs a photographer is just not a nice human. I can see it in the eyes of the subject. I can do it every time. And people will say, what do you mean? You can just tell how relaxed a subject is. You can just yeah. tell how relaxed they were in that setting and with that person. Mm -hmm. And the two things are so important how how relaxed you make that person feel it's unbelievable how it is shown in the photo yeah okay so what made you want to do documentaries what was your kind of main thing on why you wanted to do it honest answer go for it i don't think i've ever wanted to do documentaries what I mean, <laughs> i've never wanted to do documentaries like it just it was just a natural progression and i don't even call you know how you didn't know how to name 100 musicians earlier on i don't know how to name half of my what what is 61 Hugs, right? Is it, is, it, is it a documentary? Is it a short film? Is it a vlog? Like, 
nobody knows how to define it. I don't know how to define it. And there's a certain joy in that because it's like, it is what it is. It is whatever you want it to be. So in terms of documentary making in its, in its most common sense, I don't know that I've ever thought, I want to be a documentary maker. So I just like telling stories in whatever form. So it can be a vlog or it can be a documentary or it can be like um, a short film. You know, so to answer your question, the probably, probably the best way I can answer that is I just like telling stories and, and most specifically stories that are unscripted and are spontaneous. And as you're watching it unfold, that's how it was for me. I think it's amazing that 61 Hugs actually got to Dogfest. Is that right? <laughs> yes. Yes, it did. <laughs> and yeah, mm, it, was, it, it, it was quite a beautiful thing in terms, in terms of the accomplishments of that little film and how it connected with people, how it made people feel. You know, I get direct messages from all over the place, like all over the world saying, I've just watched this, it's just made my day. It's just opened my heart. It's just made me feel so positive about people. Um, and... I could sit here all day and say that was my motivation behind it, but it wasn't. My motivation behind it was just to stretch myself and have a little adventure. All the bonuses that have come as a result are just icing for me. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and that's, that's just beautiful. I couldn't have anticipated it would connect with people in the way it did. I knew it was probably, I knew on, it was unlike anything I've done before in terms of yeah. how it made me feel, but yeah, that's yeah. not to say anybody's going to share that. Yeah, cool. Um, most of the times when you're doing your documentaries, you use a mobile phone. Is that mm. most of the time or do you use an SLR camera or does it, you know, what, what do you use? Interesting question. What do you think? I think you most use a mobile phone. And what do I use when I'm not using a mobile phone? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not actually, I'm not actually sure. It, it's just when I watch them, they're very raw, yep. raw footage. And I think that's why people like it, CK, is that okay. it's raw. It's not being... It's been edited, yeah. but it's not been like full on edit, you know, it's it's raw. What you see is what you get. And what does that mean to you as a viewer? The reason I'm asking this is because I hear this a lot, Dean, and mm -hmm. I still don't know. I love it. I've, it always comes from a positive place. People always use the word raw in terms of my film, yeah. which is nice because you use garbage. Mm. So, I'll take, so I'll take raw. It's not garbage. I'll take raw. And I love it because people always use it in a complimentary sense, but I've still not understood what they mean. So please feel free to elaborate. Right, okay. So <laughs> the reason why I like it is that it's not over-edited. Okay. There's not too much um, background music or anything to kind of take your mind off the actual documentary itself. Okay. So it's very clear on what you're trying to get across. Okay. So like with 61 hugs, you can see that you're trying to hug people. Yeah. And there is tiny bits of music, but there's not much that takes away the actual what you're doing. Right. Okay. If that makes sense. Mm, it does. Thank you. And to answer your question, it's always on mobile phone. And that isn't... That isn't like a conscious decision. I'm going to become the mobile phone guy. It's never been that. <laughs> it's, if anything, it's more laziness. Like, because... <laughs> If anything, it's more laziness because like whenever I encounter someone that interests me and I think I want to find out more about you, what do I have with me at that time? Yeah. Like most of the time, half of my projects are just when I'm out minding my own business. So why would I have a DSLR? I don't even own a DSLR at the moment, by the way. Okay. When I did, when I did, why, <laughs> why would I have had it with me when I'm on a bus in my current documentary, Waiting with a Killer? Like why would I be on a bus with a DSLR? Like I wouldn't be. So whenever I meet someone that interests me, I'm straight onto my phone because it'll, no, I was going to say it'll do, but that undermines the phone. The phones are great now, right? Yeah, you yeah. You get great yeah. footage on phone. So it's like. I think the thing is, is we have film, like you've just said, they are getting more and more better. Like some of, some of the photos, I went to a, a gig a bit ago and, you know, took some photos on my phone. Because you're not allowed an SLR camera with you, anyway, right? When right, you go to gigs. right. So, um, but more critically to that, you're right about the quality. But more critically, and I think this is the key thing: people don't feel intimidated by phone because everybody's got one. If you if you pulled out that when you start talking to someone, it just raises the stakes from their yes. point of view. It raises yes. the stakes and like, what's going on here? But the, the minute you pull out when you go into places, like when you go to gigs and things like that. As soon as they see an SLR camera or something like that, then they'll be like, okay. Correct, correct. So, <laughs> I'll move out to your way. <laughs> you're absolutely right. So, so, so a mobile phone just re removes all barriers, minimizes all anxiety, and people just open up because everybody has seen the phone. So they just think we're just doing a selfie thing. They don't know I'm going to go home and produce this thing, but yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't matter because they're all up for it either way. Yeah. So waiting with a killer. Um, Matthew 
the guy, let's kind of elaborate a little bit about this guy. So Matthew is a guy who basically you saw on the bus in America. Uh, whereabouts in America was it again? San Diego. San Diego. So in San Diego, you didn't know this guy. You didn't know who he was as a person, did you? You didn't know anything about him. No, I was just standing at the bus stop, minding my own business, and he joined me at the bus stop. He took exception to someone that drove past him and apparently started looking at him, which he didn't like. He muttered some words, mm -hmm. and you know me, I'll just talk to anybody. I was like, what's wrong, mate? And there, from that one innocuous throwaway question, we just started talking. Mm -hmm. Got on the same bus, started talking further. Turns out we were getting off at the same place, and then that's when he dropped the, in inverted commas, Rev I was going to say bombshell, but revelation on me that, you know, when he was at school, this is his story, when he was at school and he was 11, he killed the school bully that was bullying him. Mm. How did you get onto that? Because it, it's kind of, for, for him to disclose something so big, um, how, how did you get onto that conversation? Was it on the bus that he kind of got to it and then you basically said, well, dude, let, let's just wait and we'll, we'll talk about that when we get off so the bus? It's a really valid question and one I've not been asked yet, which has surprised me. But just, I mean, the reason it's not in there, <laughs> the reason it's not in there is because for mechanical, re I mean, I wasn't recording at the time that it came out, but basically what happened, the bit on the bus, which you do see, he's talking about his time in the forces, right? He's talking about his time in forces. Yes. So when I stopped recording, we got off the bus just by complete, throw away I just asked him by the way well, how, why were you in the forces anyway like, what got you in there and then he just said because when I was 11 I killed the guy that was bullying me and as the court as the court case developed well yes as the court case developed it was basically either prison or services yeah, yeah. so that's how it came out and then at that point I was like he, and he was just so matter of fact there was no pause or hesitancy he wasn't like I don't know if I want to tell you this he just just went straight ahead and told me and I just said to him, exactly as we were saying earlier on, look, this is going to sound odd, but I record a lot of my personal yeah. interactions with people. What you just told me is quite remarkable. Do you mind if we, if I just film our talk? He was like, yeah, of course you can. Do what you want. I think the thing is for me is like we were saying about obviously contents and how, how it's made. I think it was really cool how it was made right. because it was so slick and, you know, the with the times and the time frame of saying when it was and stuff, it just kind of makes it clear to the the person who's watching it. Okay. Um, which is which is really cool and really good. Um, well, I'm grateful for that, mate. And I'll tell you why I'm grateful is because I'm not training anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Never mind film. I'm not technically training anything. Yeah. So when it comes when it comes to producing a story, I'm just running entirely on instinct, and um, it's a delight to hear you say that. Right, right at the end of the film, um, you see the guy again. You see yeah. Matthew again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know if he was homeless. Yeah. If I don't know if you know that. Um, I think he said he is, but then so yes, I think he said when we first met at the bus stop that he is. But I mean, you can imagine me, by the way. You can imagine me making that, and then because that's just how it happened. I'm going to be honest with you. Right? I, I okay. can be very cynical when I want, well, when I say what I want to be, I never want to be cynical, but if I leave my mind to run, it goes to very cynical <laughs> places, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I often think if I was watching this, what would I think? Can I, can I be honest? If I yeah. was watching the final scene of my own documentary, I'd be like, bollocks. <laughs> He's yeah. asked him to turn up. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Because it's just inconceivable that I've met this guy in one day and then just at the end, he just turns up out of the blue. And that's the end. It's a very, it's a, for, I love the ending because it's very, defined and it's very, it's almost perfect it's just you the gods just send me a beautiful scene but like anyone that thinks that scene is made up i have huge sympathy for that argument because i think it's, it's it, i don't think it's unjust to think that because it's yeah. just it's, it seems very odd do you think he may have followed you no <laughs> but thank you for scaring the shit no i i, I just i just wondered i just wondered if he i don't think he you. followed me because i know that he does live near my hostel right because he said because that's where we met the bus stop was near my hostel uh, so it's okay, okay, and, okay. and i mentioned that in the documentary yeah, just yeah, to make sure yeah. people understand that yeah. that meeting was near my hostel so it's conceivable that he lives in the vicinity of my hostel so the fact he's walking past fair enough yeah. but i don't know where he lives or why i was walking out late at night but yeah i want to say to the viewers as well definitely you know go and watch waiting with the killer it's it's an amazing documentary. It can actually be found at waitingwithakiller.com as well for your own ease. Awesome. Read some of the comments underneath as well, entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to say 
thank you for coming to talk to us. It's muchly appreciated. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, just basically uh, reel off, obviously, your Instagram, Facebook, mm. stuff like that, so people can watch your documentaries. Well, CK Golding on all of the above, G O L D W I N G. But yeah, I mean, you know, if 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 out of all the things we discussed today, sixty one hugs dot com would be where you can find the documentary. The only the only thing I've ever made, not the only thing, but the thing I've made that's touched the most people, sixty one hugs dot com. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, CK. Thanks, Dean. Much appreciated. Thanks.